fellow believers in Christ Jesus. Some of us stress over things which, in the grand scheme, are of less importance than others, seemingly unable or unwilling to see clearly, to prioritize and tend to what matters most. And Jesus Christ warned his disciples of such during his anointing with oil by a woman, as recorded in all four New Testament Gospels, Matthew chapter 26, Mark chapter 14, Luke chapter 7, and John chapter 12. Now let's examine the anointing, putting it all into proper perspective, as well as studying the variations of the event as recorded in the biblical narratives. I'm Pastor Bill King, and this is Bill King Ministries, and I thank each of you for joining me. May God bless this message and each of you as well. Amen. The title of my message today is Priorities, what matters most. In quoting Matthew 26 through 6, Matthew 26, 6 through 13. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me do you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as memorial to her. According to Matthew's, Mark's, and John's narratives, the anointing takes place in the home of Simon the leper in the village of Bethany. In Luke's narrative, it takes place in the home of a Pharisee named Simon, in or near the cities of Capernaum and Nain, where Jesus miraculously healed the centurion's sick servant in Capernaum without so much as laying hands on, on or eyes on the servant, and raised the dead son of the widow in Nan back to life. Matthew and Mark's narratives provide only an anonymous female does the act, anointing Jesus' head with expensive oil, while John's narrative names her as Mary of Bethany. Luke's narrative provides only she's an anonymous, sinful woman. John's narrative has Mary anointing Jesus' feet, not his head, with the expensive oil, then drying his feet with her hair, while Luke's narrative reflects the sinful woman washed Jesus' feet with her tears, dried them with her hair, and then anointed his feet with the expensive oil, not his head. Matthew and Mark's narratives have several of Jesus' disciples objecting to such wastefulness, while John's narrative holds Judas Iscariot, the traitor, as who objected. Luke's narrative has Simon the Pharisee as who complains about not only the wastefulness, but the sinful nature of the female as well, further stating if Jesus was who he said he was, he would have known a sinful woman was serving, touching him. How or why such differences in the accountings exist is unknown, and perhaps will never be deciphered. However, the point of all four narratives is clear. Those who give everything they have to God, prioritizing their lives and earthly possessions to do so, regardless of doing so, appears outwardly detrimental. They shall be more greatly rewarded for having done so inwardly and spiritually than those who have far more but give less. In other words, priorities, what matters most. 
Is it more important to amass material possessions, wealth and riches, to only squander such a way, keeping our earthly treasures to ourselves? Or is it better to use the blessings we've been giving towards matters of grave importance, such as the woman depicted in the anointing narrative? Priorities. What matters most? In the anointing, the priority was Jesus. For he said, For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. As he forewarned his disciples, though they didn't truly comprehend his meaning, he would soon be taken from them, no longer in their presence. In all four narratives, the female, whether it was Mary of Bethany, or an anonymous female, or possibly an anonymous sinful female, she had her priorities straight. She recognized and believed Jesus for whom he claimed to be, the living Son of God. She further realized she may not be in his presence again, or at least any time soon. So she acted appropriately, placing him at the top of her list of priorities. She gave him the best she had, all she had, which amounted to her everything. She did so out of reverence and respect, as well as custom and tradition, apparently aware of Jesus' fate to come on. Now why is this lesson of such importance? What is its significance, particularly in the lives of Christians? We are not purely placed on earth to see to our own wants, needs, and desires and those of our immediate family. Rather, to care about and see to the wants, needs, and desires of others, particularly those less fortunate. The Holy Bible says, in quoting Deuteronomy 14, 28 through 29, And at the end of every third year you shall bring out the tithe of your produce of that year, and store it up within your gates. And the Levite, because he has no portion or no inheritance with you, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow who are within your gates, may come and eat and be satisfied, that the Lord your God may bless you in all your work of your hand which you do. Quoting De- Deuteronomy twenty four, nineteen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. When you reap your harvest in the field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. Quoting Luke three, ten through eleven. So the people asked him, that is John the disciple. So the people asked him, saying. What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. In quoting 1 Timothy 6.17 Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Everything we have, God has blessed us with. Thereby, it belongs to Him. He grants everything unto us, intent upon such being used for His will, and not our own. Quoting Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Quoting Psalms 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Quoting 1 Chronicles 29, 13 through 14. Now therefore, our God, We thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and who are my people, 
that we should be, be able to offer so willingly as this. For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. We, as children of God, are to remain diligent and strive to do our best in all matters, including how we acquire our, our earthly possessions and resources, as well as how we use them. Quoting Colossians 3, 23 through 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And quoting Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the, the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. There's another brilliant, brilliant illustration of prioritizing and knowing what's more important, and it's found in the book of Mark, wherein the poor woman tithed her last bit of money, which was praised more greatly by Jesus than the tithes of the well-to-do, and I'm quoting Mark 12, 41 through 44. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor woman came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor woman has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Now the point of this message, in both scenarios, the anointing of Jesus and the poor woman tithing all she had is a valuable lesson in prioritizing and giving unto the Lord our God all we have. For without him, we have nothing. God is who and what is important. Not the trivial matters of the world and what we want out of life. The sooner a person realizes such truth, adjusting their thought process, and their heart, behaving accordingly, the sooner they'll draw near to God and in accordance with His will, the blessings and mercies shall multiply. The sooner a person realizes such truth, striving diligently, giving their all and everything they undertake in glorifying God, not themselves, their coffers shall fill to the brim. Going through life with the inability to prioritize and apply ourselves and our attentions towards what's most significant leaves us only spinning our wheels and certainly doesn't serve to draw us near to our Lord. Now in conclusion, a question. Do we have our priorities straight? Seeing to what's most important and doing what God desires for us to do with all our attention, effort, and resources? If not, isn't it time we did? Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Go in peace. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, we give it all to you, for all we have is yours. We praise you for the thoughtful blessings and mercies in our lives, and the freedom and opportunity to better ourselves through diligence and effort, as guided by your hand. Thank you for the precious gift of freedom from death and sin, provided unto us through faith in your Son, Jesus, by your grace. It's in his holy name we pray. Amen.